a desert planet with twin suns. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Use my knowledge. Much to learn. You still. Welcome back to Twin Sun Talks, folks. I'm your host, Jonah Liu. As usual, thank you so much for listening. If this is your first time listening, I really hope that you enjoy what I have for you today. Um, That being said, in the interest of full transparency, I want to be as honest with y'all as I can. I do record these pretty far in advance. Uh, So I think, um, well, I I know for a fact that I'm recording this uh, tail end of April. And I think that I remember correctly, I have this slated to release sometime in May. Uh, so if y'all still hear any background noise that's like I'm still in my dorm, that's because I'm still in my dorm. Um, and that being said, uh, I want to make sure there's as much continuity as possible within this podcast, but I have recorded quite a few episodes that I'm planning on releasing a bit out of order. So if there's a little bit, if I am a little bit redundant in what I say, or I say I'm going to do something that I've already done, then I apologize for that. But that's just kind of how we're rolling with this podcast. It's not going to be perfect. Like I just, I don't need to tell you this, but I'm oversharing today. So why not? Uh, I just had to re-record this entire opening because I didn't have my microphone properly attached, so it all recorded through my computer microphone, which sounded really, really awful, and I love y'all so much that I decided to completely re-record it. Um, So yeah, enough about that. Uh, Today we're going over an introspective into The Mandalorians. Uh, Whenever I was first kind of canvassing for this podcast, essentially going around and saying, okay, if I were to do this, what would y'all want me to go over? This was something that came up a lot because there's not too much uh, explanation for the Mandalorians uh, within the existing uh, visual media like shows, um, movies and stuff like that. They're very uh, they're very obscure and kind of mysterious, which is part of what makes them cool. But I'm just going to be throwing a bit of information at y'all about that. Uh, that being said, I this isn't something that I'm super, super well-versed in, so if I do get anything wrong, feel free to call me out. Uh, you can go ahead and email me. It's twinsuntalks at gmail.com. Uh, all my contact information is in the website for this podcast, which is um, uh, twinsuntalks.wixsite, that's W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot com slash twin dash sun. Um, uh, yeah, or slide into my DMs at, uh, at Twin Sun Talks on Instagram. Do whatever you need to do, but uh, if I get anything wrong, I definitely want to be able to uh, correct myself, so don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, that being said, I, I feel like I say that a lot, that being said. Um, that being said, uh, there are going to be kind of minor spoilers for the movies, pretty significant spoilers for both The Clone Wars and The Mandalorian, so if you haven't watched those or haven't finished those uh, and you don't want to have any of that spoiled, go ahead and pause this episode right now and go back to my first uh, three episodes where I go through how to watch all the movies as well as uh, all the shows, what order to watch them in, and then a couple episodes over the best way to watch The Clone Wars uh, and this podcast will still be here when you are done. So, I feel like I've rambled a bit. All that said, let's dive right into ARC Trooper training. Gentlemen, who wants to be an ARC Trooper? I do, sir! Welcome back to ARC Trooper training, folks. Today I have for you my comprehensive introspective into the Mandalorians. Uh, so what this is going to be, much like my introspective into the Jedi and Sith. Uh, This is going to be a brief uh, rundown of the Mandalorians, uh, kind of a dive into their history, structure, uh, moral guidelines, significant components, uh, key members, all of that stuff. And this um, will cover all the way up to the second season of the Mandalorian. Um, So that's about nine or ten after the Battle of Yavin. So... As usual, we're going to start out by asking the question, what is a Mandalorian? So, very basically, they were a proud ancient warrior race, which wasn't really specific. I feel like, for the most part, canonically, they are humans, but uh, it's more of a 
it's like a creed, a lifestyle rather than an actual like race of people. There were people from the planet Mandalore, but Mandalorians as we know them is more of a warrior lifestyle like Spartans. Um, so they have very distinct armor. They kind of have the, the T shape in their visor. Their armor is made of Beskar or some kind of Beskar alloy, which is a sacred metal uh, to the Mandalorians, and it's able to withstand most energy-based attacks. So it's kind of like the Star Wars equivalent to Vibranium for all of you Marvel fans out there. Uh, the armor that they use is very advanced, uh, and it was kind of developed in such a way that it's able to go toe-to-toe with Force wielders, and I'll get more into that in a bit. But some more about Mandalorian culture. Uh, the big component of it is the dark saber. So it's a unique lightsaber with a black blade, which isn't seen anywhere else in the existing canon. Uh, and it was created by Tar Vizsla, who was the first and only known Mandalorian Jedi. Uh, when he died, it was uh, stored on display in the Jedi Temple, and then members of House Vizsla uh, broke into the temple and stole it back and then passed it down through their generations. Um, and it represents essentially the rightful ruler of Mandalore ever since it was taken back by uh, Clan Vizsla, and uh, it must be obtained through a uh, trial by combat. Otherwise, uh, whoever has it, if they didn't get it through trial by combat, their rule might be seen as illegitimate. Uh, there's also a lot of imagery within Mandalorian culture of mythosaurs, which they were uh, fabled to ride. Um, and it's just that it's kind of like a dragon looking skull that you see like on Boba Fett's armor, or it's the giant crest that's in the armorer's chamber in the Mandalorian. I have a sticker on it on the back of my computer. It's so cool. I really love it. And uh, that's about all I have for uh, just kind of what a Mandalorian is. The history of the Mandalorians is a little less defined than others. So I'm going off of like significant events rather than like specific years. I had very specific timeline dates for the Jedi and the Sith. Those aren't super available for the Mandalorians. So I'm just going to be going through uh, major historical events. Um, once again, there are a couple dates in here that are... Uh, referenced with uh put into reference with the battle of yavin so that's going to be bby before the battle of yavin aby after the battle of yavin that's just putting everything in reference to episode four which is the very first star wars movie so first off we have mandalore the great establishes the legacy of the mandalore which is the ruler of uh the mandalorians and he kind of starts uh this uh trend of uh, crusades and expansion throughout uh, the outer rim regions of the galaxy and that expansion eventually puts the mandalorians into conflict with the jedi order when they start uh fringing upon the republic and that causes a lot of conflict there are a lot of wars versus uh the mandalorians versus the jedi uh the mandalorians ally themselves with the sith on several occasions and develop like i said effective tactics for fighting force wielders out of necessity. Uh, and the last great struggle between Mandalorians and Jedi occurred on the planet Mandalore itself. And it was said to have caused catacly a cataclysmic event that left the surface of the planet just co a complete barren scorched desert. And then the, uh, the inhabitants of that planet later had to create these kind of biomes uh, because planet like is essentially artificial living quarters because the planet was so completely and utterly destroyed by all the conflict um in legends a lot of this is legends we haven't had much like official background on um the mandalorians in canon but in legends there was a battle at uh, uh i'm gonna butcher this uh gala G oh no uh I, I, I literally, I just figured out how to say this word. Galadron. 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 I don't know. It's like Alderon, but it's spelled G A L I D R A N. You know what I think? I, I think I'm going to turn this podcast and just, into just like an ASMR channel where I just mispronounce Star Wars words. 
comment below. All right, I don't even, I always say that. I, there's no comment section here. But let me know if that's something that you want me to do. I can make a segment out of that, just like, Galadron, Galadron, Galadron. Okay, we're off topic. But uh, this is a conflict during the Mandalorian Civil Wars, uh, which was a conflict between uh, two major factions of the Mandalorians, which were Death Watch and the True Mandalorians. And so a task force of Jedi went uh, to the planet Galadron. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm just committing to it. Um, uh, and uh, Count Dooku was one of the Jedi there, and the Mandalorians, and it was a bloodbath. Um, and Dooku, uh, Jango Fett was the one surviving uh, member of the true Mandalorians, and they were uh, later found out to be to have been set up by the Death Watch, um, and they kind of tricked the Jedi into coming in, doing their dirty work for them. So it's kind of interesting, but after that, the true Mandalorians were kind of uh, not really a player in Mandalorian politics, and I'll go a bit more into them in a sec. But about 42 BBY, somewhere around there, there's another civil war uh, on Mandalore between uh, kind of more progressive pacifists and the martial traditionalists, uh, where Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn are sent to protect uh, uh, Satine Kree's who is kind of the leader of the new Mandalorians, who are the more progressive pacifists. Uh, and the pacifists end up prevailing, and the traditional, uh, more warrior type, who were, like, the Death Watch was a pretty prominent group within them, uh, were exiled to the moon of Concordia. 22 BBY, which is during the events of Attack of the Clones, Jango Fett is discovered by Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, he is the donor for the clone army. Um, and he is slain by Mace Windu on Geonosis. During the Clone Wars, Death Watch rises to prominence from the Moon of Concordia, as previously mentioned. And they're kind of a major player in the Clone Wars, which is really cool. Uh, they end up uh, teaming up with Darth Maul and Savage Press uh, to retake Mandalore and put it under their control uh, eventually. Pre Vizsla, who is the current leader of Death Watch at the time, uh, is defeated by Darth Maul during a duel, and Darth Maul takes control over um, Death Watch, and he kind of has uh, just this army of Mandalorians at his disposal, and that's his the start of his criminal empire. Uh, during the events of Revenge of the Sith, 19 BBY, uh, there's the Siege of Mandalore, which is when Bo-Katan... Uh, teams up with Ahsoka Tano, Captain Rex, and the members of the 332nd Battalion, and they go back to Mandalore to retake it um, from Maul and his legions of Death Watch. Uh, and they do so successfully, but not for long, because then Order 66 occurs, and the Great Purge of the Mandalorians happens under Imperial subjugation of Mandalore. And that time period is very fuzzy, um, and if we learn a bit more, then I will uh, let you know. But essentially, Mandalorians were sent into hiding um, after this occurred. And they were kind of, uh, they were driven out of the Mandalorian uh, system of planets and kind of just kind of scattered throughout the galaxy. Uh, about 4 ABY, which is the events of Return of the Jedi, Boba Fett falls into the Sarlacc pit and then around 9 ABY, the Mandalorian uh, takes place, and this is when the Mandalorians are still in exile. And uh, yeah, so that's about the end of the timeline. We go into the hierarchy now. Mandalorians were set, uh, split up into clans, so there's Clan Vizsla, Clan Kreese, uh, Clan Wren. Uh, I can't think of any others, but uh, they were essentially just family houses and they were very tribalistic in that way. Uh, there were different factions within uh, the Mandalorians. One was Death Watch. They were extremely barbaric and brutal, and they wanted to return to uh, Mandalorian roots of crusading and essentially subjugating, quote-unquote, weaker beings. Uh, the true Mandalorians, which is who, uh, who Jango Fett was a part of, um, they were a little more morally conscious. Uh, they followed a strict uh, codex, 
and they uh, had more of an emphasis on honor and decency rather than subjugation. Uh, and then there are the new Mandalorians, which are Satine's pacifists, uh, who ruled for most of the Clone Wars era. Uh, there were the protectors under Fen Rao on uh, Cardcore Dawn. I don't know much about them, but they were in Star Wars Rebels. Um, after all the events, oh, well, the, it's not even after all the events, Mandalorians were kind of infamous for being mercenaries and bounty hunters because they were such skilled warriors. They were very, very efficient and effective in uh, getting a lot of uh, harder bounties. And then there were also foundlings. So this is a very interesting concept where uh, essentially Mandalorians, kind of like the Jedi, would indoctrinate um, young orphans, essentially, that they would find. Well, the Jedi would kind of just take the kids. But if Mandalorians found a child, uh, they would kind of take them into their ranks and train them up to become Mandalorians themselves. So Din Djarin, uh, the Mandalorian in The Mandalorian, is a foundling. Uh, so that's just kind of a cool, cool little tidbit uh, that I, I just find it super interesting. So there's no defined like code, kind of like the Jedi. There is no peace. There is, or that's the Sith code. But, um, but there were a couple like the true Mandalorians followed the Super Commando uh, Codex, which again put emphasis on honor. Um, as as a whole, I'd say that the Mandalorians were very bound by honor and just the kind of a warrior mentality of dying a warrior's death. Uh, the Children of the Watch, which uh, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, uh, he grew up as a member of the Children of the Watch, and they were told that they could not take their helmets off in front of another uh, living being, which uh, obviously we see other Mandalorians do this, but under their, this is kind of a more extremist, uh, not, not in their actions, but in their just way of living, uh, sect of the Mandalorians and this is the way that's that was kind of their philosophy and uh they also uh believed in staying hidden for the uh, greater good of the collective um just so they wouldn't be hunted down for their beskar uh or for whatever other reason the imperials didn't like mandalorians all that much so uh they had reason to stay hidden uh, some key worlds and key members of the Mandalorians. First, we got Jango Fett, who was officially made a Mandalorian in Mandalorian Season 2. Uh, his son, or son, quote-unquote, his clone, Boba, um, isn't technically a Mandalorian. He is accepted as worthy of having the Mandalorian armor by Din Djarin because of his father. But he doesn't live by the Mandalorian code of... Uh, kind of uh, code of conduct, uh, as you might call it. Um, Tar Vizsla, as I said, he was the first and only Mandalorian Jedi. He created the Darksaber. Pre Vizsla is a descendant of Tar Vizsla. He was the leader of Death Watch during the Clone Wars. Amazing character. He's one of my favorite uh, new characters from the Clone Wars. Bo-Katan is Pre Vizsla's right-hand man. Uh, she's really awesome. She comes back in Rebels and the, uh, uh, the Mandalorian. Uh, she is the sister of Duchess Satine Kryze, who who is uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's love interest. She is the ruler of Mandalore during most of the Clone Wars era. She was a pacifist, and she wished for Mandalore to remain neutral uh, during the Clone Wars. Uh, Din Djarin, who is the Mandalorian, as I keep, uh, keep uh, saying, uh, he was a child of the Watch. He was a bounty hunter, uh, and he's just awesome. And I can't wait to see what more... I think that they've done a great job of developing him. Uh, and I can't wait to see what uh, comes next for him in Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, last, we have Sabine Wren, uh, who is the Mandalorian member of the Ghost team uh, in Star Wars Rebels. And I think that she's a super, super interesting character. Um, she's one of my favorite characters in that show. And... Uh, some honorable mentions, the armorer from The Mandalorian, awesome, Koska Reeves and Axe Woves, who were um, Bo-Katan's kind of entourage in Mandalorian Season 2, both really, really cool characters. Gar Saxon, uh, he was Maul's uh, first-in-command uh, under his, uh, his Legion of Death Watch, and then also he was uh, first-in-command during the Imperial Rule of Mandalore. Um, Fen Rao, once again, leader of the Protectors in Star Wars Rebels, and Prime Minister Almec, uh, 
who I think is a really fascinating character from the Clone Wars. So, all that said, we get into some key worlds. Obviously, Mandalore is a very, very much a key world for the Mandalorians. Uh, then we have Concordia, which is the uh, moon that all of the militant traditionalists were exiled to. That's where Death Watch was. Uh, whenever we found them in the Clone Wars, we have Concord Dawn, the birthplace of Jango Fett, the location of the Protectors. Um, we have Cronist, which is uh, Sabine Wren's homeworld. And then we have Navarro, which is where uh, most or where the Mandalorian covert um, was in the first season of the Mandalorian. So that's about all. This is a pretty basic run through. Um, by no means completely comprehensive, but I think it hits a lot of the uh, important points if y'all want me to go deeper into any of this, or once again, if I got anything wrong or you think that I missed anything super, super significant, please let me know. Uh, once again, all the contact information is uh, up on the website. So, that being said, this would not be a proper episode if I didn't leave y'all with a little bit more. So, what I'm going to be talking at y'all about today uh, is the Star Wars calendar. So, I know I've talked to y'all about, like, BBY and kind of that way of keeping track of time within the Star Wars universe, but this is, like, an actual calendar year and other measurements of time within the Star Wars universe. So, much like us, uh, 60 standard minutes is one standard hour. There are 24 hours in one standard day, but this is where they kind of deviate from... Uh, conventions here on earth uh, there are only five standard days in one standard week and then there are seven standard weeks in one standard month and then one year in the star wars universe has 10 standard months three festival weeks and three holidays so if you were keeping track that comes out to be 368 standard days in one standard year within the star wars universe so i just thought that was kind of interesting i actually took a quiz um, it was, it was one of those YouTube rabbit holes where it was an ad on YouTube and it was like only 3% of Star Wars fans get this hundred percent correct. I personally don't believe that cause I got, what did I get? I think I got a 92% on it and I feel like I know quite a bit, but that, that was one of the questions that I missed. I didn't know that there were 368 days, uh, in a standard year in Star Wars. So, um, I just wanted to let y'all know that. And of course I know that they're different planetary systems so obviously they're going to be different all that stuff like I, I i understand that but this is star wars so let's not overthink the science behind all of that stuff um but yeah so whenever whenever i don't know something i'm always going to try to impart that knowledge onto y'all uh because i hate not knowing things and if i can help other people not or know the things that i don't know then hey i feel like that's a win um, so that's all I have for today. I really hope that y'all enjoyed uh, learning a bit about the Mandos. Um, and yeah, uh, if y'all have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, once again, we are twinsuntalks at gmail.com. Uh, you can DM me on Instagram at twinsuntalks. Uh, if you want to see us on YouTube, which is literally just this podcast, but on YouTube, uh, we are Twin Sun Talks Podcast. If you want to check out uh, just some cool stuff on our website, uh, you can go ahead. It's a one-stop shop for all things this podcast. It is twinsuntalks.wixsite.com slash twin-sun. If you create an account, uh, I can send you email blasts about when episodes are coming out and stuff like that, which is super cool. Uh, yeah, bookmark it. Always know where that website is. I really appreciate any support that y'all give this podcast because this is super fun for me, and I just hope that it's uh, fun for y'all as well. So I'm going to stop rambling now. Uh, you've taken your first steps into a larger world. May the force be with you, and I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye, friends.